Ladies and gentlemen, in 1992, he won Olympic gold in Barcelona, and he has won three world titles. Tonight, he is the challenger. Oscar de la Hoya is on a quest to capture his fourth recognized world title in four separate weight classes. This crusade started by conquering the competition in the 135-pound division. That's it! That's it! Oscar de la Hoya! You're looking at a world of talent for a world champion right there. De la Hoya then moved up to 140 pounds and took the title away from Julio Cesar Chavez. This kid is like a debutante with a knife in her purse. His third world title was at 147 pounds against veteran champion Pernell Whitaker. The winner by unanimous decision and new champion of the world, the Golden Boy! Tonight's fight is the first for De La Hoya at 154 pounds, and the champion Javier Castillejo is out to prove that the Golden Boy's reach has exceeded his grasp. If not, De La Hoya will stand side by side with boxing legends Thomas Hearns, Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, and Pernell Whitaker as the only fighters to win titles in four different weight classes. Stay tuned for History in the Making next. Oscar De La Hoya versus Javier Castillejo. During his pro career, now Oscar believes that if he is successful tonight, that he, Oscar, will be back in the driver's seat, hoping to force matches with Vargas, Shane Mosley, and a rematch with Felix Trinidad. Do you agree with that assessment, that thinking? If he wins tonight, he'll be in a powerful position, but to what degree, that's debatable. First of all, if he fights Trinidad, and Trinidad has beaten Hopkins, Based on what I've heard, he's not going to be in a driver's seat. Trinidad is going to pretty much dictate the terms for the most part. If he fights Trinidad after Trinidad may lose to Hopkins and drops back down, then it's different. If he fights Shane Mosley, Shane Mosley is still looking for parity, so that's going to be a problem. You're mostly dealing with egos. Vargas is a different situation, but I think he's going to be in a good position, but not as powerful as he would like to be. And, of course, that is a big if. Based on the supposition that he is successful tonight, we talked about the champion who is not very well known here in the States. And again, we were very candid, not an exceptional fighter, but a decent fighter. Who do you think will win tonight and how? I believe that Oscar De La Hoya will win the fight tonight primarily because of two reasons. One, speed, experience in super fights, particularly here in this particular city. And I think the fact that he seems to be more relaxed as we go into the fight. I was noticing in the dressing room for the first time, Castillo seems to be a little uptight, a little uncomfortable. And I think that's going to carry over into the fight. I think that Oscar will win. I don't know whether it's going to be by decision or knockout, but I feel that he will win the fight. Ah, despite that placid demeanor that Castillejo has been showing us all along, maybe the bright lights of Las Vegas getting to him a bit, huh? I think it's having this effect right now. All right, we'll head back downstairs once again, ringside to the guys who will give us their insight to Jim Lampley. All right, JB, so now we get ready for yet another important passage in Oscar De La Hoya's career as he moves up to a new weight level to try to win a title, to try to establish himself as a 154-pound fighter, to try to set himself up for future business down the road. And George Foreman, we've been watching him a long time, and uh, there was a period there when uh, his outside-the-ring activities seemed to pose something of a distraction for Oscar as a fighter. Now he says, enough of that. I'm totally rededicated to fighting. But will we see the results of that rededication in a fight like this tonight, or do we have to wait and see him against a Shane Mosley, a Felix Trinidad, a Fernando Vargas to know for sure? Yeah, I know for a fact, as an as a ex-boxer, once you get in that ring and that bell rings, there's no such thing as an easy fight, and you can save it for the next day. We're going to see the best he has tonight, and I think if he's prepared at all, we're going to see it tonight. If he hasn't got it, it's because he didn't have it at all. All right. Well, he knows what he's in against. He has looked at tapes, paid attention to Castillejo's past career. 
And Larry Merchant, uh, even though you have to be a Harold Letterman type boxing fan to know a lot about Javier Castillejo, he's regarded as one of the better 154 pound fighters. But what American media have questioned and what our fans tonight want to know is, does he pose a real threat to Oscar De Loya? Verbally, he already does. He insists that he is quicker than De Loya, that he is stronger, and these are real fighting words, that he is better looking. Depends, of course, on whether you prefer a hunky romantic lead or a rugged action star. But Castillejo, in his two victories over solid American fighters, showed that, like a Spanish bullfighter, he can duel from the outside and he has the courage to go inside. A safe prediction. At least an hour from now, at least one of these guys is not going to be as good looking as he is at this moment. That's safe. Uh, let's give our American fight fans a chance to get to know Javier Castillejo just a little bit better and to see him in his good looking face in uh, a few fights, including those two wins you mentioned against tough American opponents. But we start by going back to 1996 and his return engagement against Laurent Boudouani, who had beaten him the first time around on a ninth round TKO and then beat him again on a decision in this fight. Boudouani in the blue trunks was an unusual fighter who wings the right hand, but a good fighter. In fact, Castillejo says he was a better fighter than De La Hoya, and he twice beat Castillejo, two of the Spanish fighters' four losses. Boudouani was a very tough, solid, world-class fighter who beat him at home in Paris. Now, here is Castillejo in the fight in which he won the 154-pound title he brings into the ring tonight, January of 1999, against Keith Mullings of the United States. And Mullings was a tough guy who gave fits to some American fighters whom you know. But Castillejo won a decision against him, although some ringside observers felt the decision should have gone the other way. Then July 21 of last year, Castillejo again fighting at home in Spain against a quicker American named Tony Marshall. Uh, there have been questions because the, the, of the decisions in his hometown. I've watched the tapes. You can easily make the case that he won both fights. So a look for you there at the strong, durable, 33-year-old Javier Castillejo, the man whom De La Hoya now faces in his first trip up to 154 pounds. You heard Emmanuel Stewart tell you way back at the beginning of our pay-per-view that he believes 154 is now the natural weight class for De La Hoya. It had better be if he's going to be in good shape in there tonight because certainly it's the right weight class for Castillejo. Uh, a question here is that ever since he moved into the welterweight divisions, starting at 140, De La Hoya hasn't been a knockout kind of fighter, a good puncher, but the only guy of significance he knocked down in all the fights he's had since 140 was Corte. So how is he going to do against uh, a junior middleweight? All right, well, let's take a look at the progression of Oscar De La Hoya's career, and we'll see him at the various stages at which he's been showcased as a star, going all the way back to the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona in August, where he dedicated his effort to his recently deceased mother and won the gold medal that had been expected for him. And he began his professional career and immediately began scoring knockdowns and knockouts, largely with his terrific left hook. First big title win, May 6, 1995, at 135 pounds against Rafael Ruelas. An easy second round knockout for De La Hoya. And at this stage of his career, he was, in many instances, a devastating puncher. And then on June 7, 1996, his first showcase fight against a fellow superstar when he cut up and bloodied Julio Cesar Chavez. Chavez was past his peak and fighting perhaps at not his best weight, but De La Hoya was just too much for him and may have been too much for him in his best day. One thing about Oscar De La Hoya, George Foreman, he's never been scared to fight the best opponents. He took on Pernell Whitaker in his first fight as a welterweight, April of 97. You gotta give it to him. Take on anyone in any weight class, and he's showing us tonight. Got all of the skills. 
Now, this was a decision which went De La Hoya's way. Many ringside experts felt it should have gone the other way. And so, too, did some ringside experts feel that De La Hoya had come a cropper against the Ghanaian star Ike Quarte. But in the 12th round of this fight, it was De La Hoya who was the man of the hour, although Quarte had knocked him down earlier in the fight with that left hook there. And the fight was on the table in the 12th. De La Hoya rallied, knocked Quarte down, dominated the action, and secured the decision. And having done that, having secured the decision, again in two fights that were questioned by many observers, when he fought Trinidad and stayed away from him for the late rounds, he really couldn't quarrel with the decision, although many ringside observers thought he won narrowly. Clearly the most controversial night of De La Hoya's career. He seemed to have Trinidad technically outgunned, but then backed off in the late rounds, and a close decision was given to the Puerto Rican star. So De La Hoya seeks a rematch against Trinidad and Vindication, just as he seeks a rematch against the terrific Shane Mosley. Trinidad, I think he'll do it just fine, but Shane Mosley, stay out of the way of this guy. <laughs> he's got too many weapons. You know, he's fought four top guys, all credit to him for that. But he didn't dominate a single one of them. Well, they were terrific fighters. And so, too, is Oscar De La Hoya. He took eight months off after the loss to Mosley. Hired a new trainer. Says that he rededicated himself. Came back with a showcase performance against Arturo Gatti. A chance to look good against an easy target. And he did exactly that April of this year here in this arena. So now he gets ready to take another step against Castillejo. Overwhelmingly favored to win what may well be a tougher fight than Oscar and his handlers have anticipated. Fail of the tape for Oscar De La Hoya and Javier Castillejo. And you see that the Spanish fighter gives up five years in age. He is 33 years old. The height difference listed here as a half inch. When they stood together at the pre-fight news conference, it looked as though it was a bigger height advantage than that for Castillejo. The reach advantage lies with De La Hoya and his terrific left jab, which surely he will hope to make a dominant factor early in the fight. They both weighed in exactly at the 154-pound level. Punch that numbers, Larry. These punch that numbers for Castillejo come from his two fights against the Americans. As you can see, the numbers are very, very similar. Castillejo, however, uses his jab more often. De La Hoya has a terrific jab, but he often forgets to use it. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Yes, De La Hoya, Javier Castillejo fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. On an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after four rounds, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, as is usually the case here, we expect an enormously pro De La Hoya crowd as trainer Floyd Mayweather prepares to walk him out. It's not as big a crowd as De La Hoya was drawing two and three years ago, but it is a sizable, energetic, and passionate crowd. The kind of crowd which De La Hoya says makes him the money boss in these weight classes, the man to whom fighters like Trinidad and Mosley and Vargas must come if they want to make the biggest possible paycheck. That's true, but he also wants them in order for him to regain his place in boxing. And the ring record for Oscar De La Hoya as a professional, 33 wins, two losses, one to Trinidad, one to Mosley, 27 of his wins by K. 11 wins in 13 title fights.
tonight. Oscar De La Hoya was a 10 to 1 favorite in man to man boxing. People don't come to Las Vegas to lay such big odds. So Castillo has been bet down to a 7 to 1 underdog at fight time. He properly would be, I think, a 4 or 5 to 1 underdog if people here knew more about him. Now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, from the city of entertainment, the MGM Grand Hotel and Casino of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, Univision Sports, in association with Murad Mohammed, Eminem Sports, and Corona Extra, proudly present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The three judges assigned to ringside scoring this bout on the 10-point must system will be from the United States, Chok Jampa, from Thailand, Anek Hongtongkam, and from England, John Keane. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action from Nevada, USA, Vic Draculich. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red and weighing in at 154 pounds. He captured Olympic gold in 1992 and now as a professional with 33 victories in 35 bouts, including 27 knockouts, he has captured five world championships. Tonight, he is the challenger looking to capture number six. Ladies and gentlemen, from East LA, here is the former junior lightweight, former lightweight, former super lightweight, and two-time welterweight champion of the world, the golden boy, Oscar.
across the ring, his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with gold. He also weighed in at 154 pounds. His professional record is an outstanding one, consisting of 51 victories in his 55 bouts, including 34 knockouts. And he is undefeated for the last five and a half years, winning 14 consecutive contests with 11 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, from Madrid, España, making his sixth title defense, presenting the reigning and defending WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Javier the Lynx Hustieho. Chief Second, just Chief Second, please. All right, gentlemen, this is for the WBC Super Welterweight title. You received your instructions. Again, I want to caution you. Any punches below here will be called low. Any punches here will be called low. With that, are there any questions? Any questions for Chief Seconds? And remember, obey my commands, protect yourselves at all times. Touch them up now, good luck to both of you. Let's go. We've heard much talk about the quantity of titles De La Hoya has won. What we want to know is whether this is a quality fight or a quantity fight. Round one begins. In his April bout against Arturo Gatti, De La Hoya looked very fluid, very loose. He threw the right hand in particular with greater effectiveness than we've seen before. That was against a relatively easy target. And the left hook wobbles Castillejo early. I thought it might have been a quick little right hand, Jim. Castillejo. Ejo. Castillejo. Castillejo has got to make certain that he keeps this a European type fight. Don't try to mix it up with this guy and exchanges. Just jab now, move out of the way, keep your hands high. You can win this thing on this thing on point because Oscar prepared like an American to slip and move and mix it up. What's a European type fight, George? You just keep your hands up and don't go for any power shots. Just keep that jab moving. When a guy try to hit you back, stop it with your hands. Right hands, just good intentions, no power. Castillejo's first clean shot is a left hook to the body. And Oscar will find tonight that his best point, points tonight will be the left jab. He's got to be dedicated to it. This guy's tall and he doesn't bend down into a lot of good shots. You got to just go on top of what you can get. If you're waiting to slip and move, you'll be waiting all night because they bring their hands right back up. The European type fighters. The difference is fairly obvious here. Deloya with his left hand down around his waist. Castillejo with his left hand in front of his face. Deloya lands a right hand as Castillejo momentarily dropped the left. Good combination punching inside by Oscar Deloya. You just cannot wait for tall, long, long guys. Oscar supposedly on paper has a longer reach. This guy's tall, and he's got the advantage when a punch is exchanged. You wait around, and it can be a lot of trouble to you. Castillejo starting to loosen up his jab against other opponents. On paper, at least, Castillejo throws a jab more frequently than does De La Hoya. Castillejo landed a solid right hand side inside, and De La Hoya walked right through it. Lands his own right hand over the top. There's already a redness around the right eye of Castillejo. Product of Oscar De La Hoya's left hand. Remember this guy has fought at this weight a lot, and he's been in with some hard hitters. Very good round one 
for De La Hoya, who is not always a fast starter. Work your jab more, okay? Work your jab more, okay? Breathe in, you know, let your mouth slow. Come on. Yeah. Right. Now, do it again. No, tira, si tira, si tira. Tranquilo. Eh? All right, nice and calm, nice and calm. Eh, Our interpreter is Ray Torres in this corner. You, you, you gotta be close to him. My copy box numbers in round one, De La Hoya landed 22 of 45 power shots. That's very good. He only threw the jab 14 times, and you heard Floyd Mayweather between rounds saying, work your jab more. Castillo threw more punches than De La Hoya in the first round, but only landed 10 of them. Now Oscar's taking charge with his jab. Be surprised you can win five or six rounds with nothing but your left hand. Oscar can if he really gets dedicated to it. Really want to show his combination, but this is not the fighter that gives you his body to do that. Castillejo mixing things up a little bit begins to lead with left hooks instead of the jab. Here's a guy fights a lot of Euro fights in Europe. He's accustomed to guys being over aggressive like this. So you just stay on your mark. Jab after they finish hitting you. Keep jabbing. Nothing gets out of hand. Castillejo short with his jab. De La Hoya able to step in and pop his to the face of Castillejo. Chopping right hand for the Spanish fighter. And he tries to go to the body, and Vic Draculic says, bring him up. First thing you notice here is that Castillo, Castillejo knows how to fight. Whether he'll be able to take De La Hoya's punches as the fight goes along remains to be seen, but you can see he has a plan, he has movement, comes in, goes out, creating some problems for Oscar. Castillejo leaning into a De La Hoya left to the body. That's what you want to do with Oscar. He's a puncher. Make him follow you around. Hard right hand by De La Hoya stuns Castillejo. And now the Spanish fighter back up and on his mark. Oscar's got his left hand on his hip. When you see a guy doing that, he's just looking for one shot. And that's when you can get him. His and hands down, and you can't, he can't do anything with his hands down. Castillejo nailed him with a right hand shot as De La Hoya allowed that left to wander low. It, it looks as though he's trying to invite the right hand so then he can do something that's about it. it. That's exactly what he's doing, which is not good. You drop your hand, why not be hit? Be aware and, and throw some punches. Okay, deep breath. You gotta throw body shots. Yes. Throw the body punches. That's what you need to do. How you feel? Good. Breathe in and let that deep. Get your combinations going. Stiff arm it so you can net it right where you want it. The stiff arm is your radar, right wherever you can. Right hands from Delaware, something that he has often neglected, as well as his jab. What did, what did Floyd Mayweather Sr. mean by telling him to stiff arm him, George? They wanted him to leave his left hand out there and kind of touch him like a man walking with a stick who can't see. 
You feel the feel where you're going and then throw. Like Lennox Lewis does. Oscar better be pe prepared because this guy is able to go in with big fighters and uh, solve a lot of punches. You take your time and set the dinner table. Jab, go to the body, weaken your opponent. Deloy responded to Floyd Mayweather's request for more jabs in round two. He threw 22 as opposed to 14 in the first round. As round three reaches its second minute, Castillo seems to be getting just a little more comfortable in the fight. Laska's turning him back into that old Frankenstein's style of just walking in, not moving your head. You don't want to do that. Bounce around, get your footing. You've always felt, George, that Deloy is at his most effective when he's up on his toes. Yeah, because you can step in, bounce to your left, bounce to your right, and make things happen aggressively. You don't have to just walk in with your head not moving like that. In other words, he has so much skill, why not use it all? Why not use it all? He's not going to do that counter-punching with guys who've had fights in Europe like that. They just can wear you out with that stuff. Castillejo momentarily elbowing De La Hoy off and then firing the right hand. And what Oscar does, he has this trainer, Mayweather, who shadow boxes with him. And he's shorter. Oscar keeps his hand, especially his left hand's lower, by habit. That punch did not land. That was blocked by Castillejo's right glove and wrist. So far, I don't sense real power coming from Delaware's punches, but that may simply be because he's missing so many of them. Yeah, and he's done well of going to the body after he misses these headshots. He sneaks in one or two to the body, which is really good. You have a guy word, pretty worried about his body, he'll eventually lay, lay those hands down. Castillejo not landing at a very high percentage, but throwing about equally with De La Hoya. And occasionally sticking in a right hand as he did there. Oscar has got to be told that it's not going to happen by reaching out at it. Let's look ahead to some upcoming Time Warner boxing programming. Next month, look for these upcoming boxing shows. July 7, HBO's Boxing After Dark brings you Hector Camacho Jr. against Jesse James Leha. Also, heavyweight Kirk Johnson faces Larry Donald. The 21st, welterweight champ Shane Mosley takes on Adrian Stone. Plus, comebacking Michael Grant fights Jameel McCline in the heavyweight division. One week later, TBKO pay-per-view features light heavyweight champion Roy Jones performing against Julio Gonzalez. Joel De La Hoya Sr. seated at ringside and as is always the case, shouting instructions in the direction of De La Hoya's corner. Mayweather seemed to be advising De La Hoya to go more to the body. De La Hoya gradually stepping up the number of jabs he's throwing round by round. According to CompuBox numbers, he threw 26 jabs in the third round. Castillejo throwing more, but landing only four of 38. Harold, how do you have it scored through three? Look at Jim, three to nothing, 30 to 27. Oscar De La Hoya. Jim, I gotta tell you something. The first two rounds I thought Oscar won with hand speed. He landed the cleanly sharper punches because he was quicker. But in round three, he backed him straight up. He just keeps backing him up, backing him up, backing him up. It's effective aggressiveness. He's scoring while he's backing up his opponent. Crowd chanting for their man, De La Hoya. When asked if he would be bothered by the large pro De La Hoya crowd, Castillejo said, well, I'm fighting in his country. In my country, I'm accustomed to fighting before 15,000 people all the time. Every fight's a big event for me. It's not going to bother me. 
you got to know how to fight the kind of fighters you're boxing. And Oscar's got to know that just loading up with power is not the way to do this guy. You just got to let them go. Jab, right hand, jab, right hand, hook occasionally. Don't go for the power. They'll just run into one sooner or later. Oscar did a good job of standing right there in the pocket that time. Set his defense and did not move out of the way. Brings his elbow up close to his face. Nice job of ducking through there. Two body shots well thrown by Deloitte. Good body shot. Excellent flurry as Castillejo statues up along the ropes and takes the De La Hoya body assault. Castillejo throws his punches, one, two, then he stops also. Sometimes just because the guy's got the reputation, you jump on him and throw some punches. Not going to keep your title by throwing two punches at a time. I think the speed differential is uh, greater than Castillo expected it to be. That's the stiff arming that his trainer told him to do. I'd like to have, ask uh, Harry Letterman is that legal? To hold the arm out there. Good flurry along the ropes. De La Hoya with an effective round. Leads the fight through four. Okay. Come on, do that do it again, I'll do it one time. Just keep doing like you're doing, man. Use the feints, okay? Faint and walk. Faint and walk, touch. Then we get a, then we get a ready combination. Bring them all in, okay? Go. The most impressive uh, interesting thing to me about Deloya so far is he appears to be more relaxed than we used to see him. He used to be so afraid of making a mistake that he, that he, he seemed tense. And that's why I believe he would get tired in the late rounds of fights. Tension will beat down conditioning every time. Well, you get tired in the late rounds of fights when you throw punches. If you're a puncher, you're going to get tired. You've got to live with that. Well, there's no question. He looked looser and more fluid than in his previous fights against Arturo Gatti earlier this year. And the pattern seems to repeat tonight. Eloy releasing punches more fluidly, most particularly the right hand. There's a good left hook that he landed inside. When you throw a lot of hard shots, I'm telling you, you need oxygen almost. When you see a guy fresh in the last couple of rounds, it's because he has not thrown a lot of hard shots. Castileo has shown that he can survive Delaware up to now. He can live with him in the ring, make a miss. What he hasn't shown is that he can defend his title. He can take after Delaware. And you have a title like that. You got to show us more than that. You got to do something other than fight to survive. Right now, Castillejo looks to me like a guy who wants to go rounds with De La Hoya. Not necessarily that he wants to show he can beat him. Well, it may also be that he thinks that in the latter stages of the fight, he'll have a chance to come on. There's the first big shot that De La Hoya's had 
the winter at 154 pounds. A hard left hook that landed flush. Preceded by a pretty good right uppercut, I thought. Agreed. When you're moving in like Oscar, you got to move your head. You just can't just move in your neck standing up like that. Throw punches, move your head. Move your head. Deloya crashing a right hand to the temple of Castillejo and firing a left hook right through the guard. Good combination by Oscar. Oscar's doing a good job of holding his hands up, waiting those punches off. Another good right hand punctuates the round for Oscar De La Hoya. Oh, the power. How you feel? Okay. Take a deep breath. Come on, take a new one more. Get more things. What are you going to do with my You gotta throw downstairs also. And, and when you throw the punch, throw with conviction. Throw with some force. Throw that right hand. Delo did a lot of good stuff on the round, but we're going to show you in replay that good combination by Castillejo. Yeah, he's going to have to do a lot more to find the combination to win this fight. Because for most of these rounds now, he seems to almost have resigned himself to the fact that he's not going to be able to do much to De La Hoya and just wants to survive. I agree. Is Fighting he, to survive. Is he going to take some risks? Copy box numbers in round five. De La Hoya landing 31 out of 63, 49%. Castillejo, despite that good combination, only five out of 42. So it's increasingly one-sided, or so it appears, in favor of the American fighter, Oscar De La Hoya. He won his gold medal in Spain, and right now he's turning the Spanish fighter into gold medal flower. And that's probably his, his advantage tonight. He had some international experience fighting European fighters. When he won. Uh, 300 amateur fights, George. Oscar's seen everything before he was ever a pro. Took upstairs. Set up by a straight right hand. Wants to throw the straight right hand again. One thing I noticed, Oscar's not paying much attention to his corner anymore. Reminds me of a marriage that's gone bad and no one has said anything. But of course, Oscar, Oscar, of course, he came into the fight saying Mayweather's the greatest trainer in the world, best trainer he's ever had, learned more in the last six months than ever before. Well, I can, I can look at that from another way. I don't know exactly what you're referring to, George, but a fighter's got to be able to sense what's going on in there and make his own changes, not just depend on his trainer. And that's one thing that has been lacking in Delaware before. I think what happens when you got when you got on your mind you're doing something good you don't want people to keep telling you things so you see him staring away from me yeah sometimes you can see a divorce happening and <laughs> your partner can't even see it <laughs> oscar will divorce you and you have no idea it's happening <laughs> it is his fifth trainer good body punch right to the body but he didn't come back with anything because he was in long-range position. That's the De La Hoya defense right there, parrying shots with his right hand, and he gets wrecked with a left hook and comes back with power punches of his own. De 
seems eager to turn this into a slugfest. Because he knows that Castillo can't hurt him. Stay Okay. Look at Sean. Look, look at Sean. Sean, right hand, can the body. Next time, bring it here. Right hand, right. Right to the body, left hook, right hand up top, all right? Don't get lazy with that jab. Take a deep breath. Sean, one more time. Okay. Keep boxing smart. Keep your head moving. Keep doing like you're doing. Use the jab up and down, up and down. Oscar boxing, punching aggressively, walks into a clean left hook, which might have sh shaken him momentarily. You know, we talked about Oscar having met a lot of Europeans as an amateur. As a professional, he's fought just two of them, a uh, Danish pastry named Bredal and a French fry named Charpentier. Castillo so far has shown that he's certainly more than something just to munch on. Yeah, he's better than Riedel and Charpentier, <laughs> that's for sure. Harold Letterman, CompuBox numbers, have it as a De La Hoya wipeout. How do you have it through six? So do I, Jim. 60 to 54, 6 to nothing, Oscar De La Hoya. Jim, we talked about his clean punching and his winning the rounds on. We talked about his effective aggressiveness. Let's talk about ring generalship. He's putting, he's putting Castillo exactly where he wants him. Back on the ropes and backing up. Oscar De La Hoya just taking it to it. Just as we see now. I'll tell you one reason why a lot of people are excited here right now. Because if Castillo completes this round, he will have won the over bet for the fans. Seven rounds is the over bet. If the fight, if you hear the bell in this round, and Castillo hasn't been knocked out, those who bet that the fight would go past seven rounds have won. Well, George, Larry makes the point that Delaware is willing to trade shots because he doesn't feel that Castillo can, can hurt him. Is that dangerous? Well, you know, he's using that crossover defense, and you got to make sure that you don't move your hand up and down like a fan when you're doing it. That's why he got caught a little bit. Set that defense, keep your hands right where they are. If you move them, you can get shot, uh, get hurt. And that's what he did uh, a moment ago. And Castillo. On the left hook caught him. Yeah. Castillo can get in there and take advantage of it when he see him crossing over like that. He's smart. He's waiting on a chance also. He's not just there he just doesn't know exactly what to do yet <laughs> you better find out soon the good thing about oscar he's throwing a lot of power away and this guy's taking it like a piece of rubber band and if this fight goes into the last two rounds he can kick things up a little bit castejo the fight within the fight and Oscar get him out of there in the last 30 seconds of the seventh round. <laughs> Some drama. There you go again. He's dropping the right hand and not keeping the left, uh, the left, the right hand right on the left hand. He got to keep his right hand right on the side of his chin. Well, because every time Oscar drops the left hand and holds his right up in front of him to parry punches, Castillo is coming around the back of it with the left hook. Archie Moore said that you got to keep it there. Don't move it around. There's the cheer from those in the crowd who bet the over. Okay. Cam cameraman, you're in my way. What happens? What happens? Javi. No, pues que no me puedo aguantar aquí. Ahora. Javi. Okay, you got to throw a lot of combinations. No puedes tomar el trabajo. Respirando, Javi. Okay. Good. Okay. Be slow. Put that for me. Put that body. Put that body. Let's break the body down again, okay? You will beat me here. Forget about the head. Break the body down some more. Okay? See a magic right hand?
Floyd Mayweather asking De La Hoya to go to Castillejo's body in this round. In the seventh round, by copy box numbers, De La Hoya threw the jab 36 times, that's a bunch, and landed 16 of them, that's good. So Cass De La Hoya's got a good right hand whenever he wants to throw it. Oscar gives him that straight right hand. Why he's holding back on it, I'd like to know. Can't miss it. Maybe he's holding back on it because of the incoming from De La Hoya's left hand. Oscar's not jabbing much. Maybe it's respect for Oscar's left hook. No, I, I think it's, it's there and he just was not prepared for it. You didn't go into training camp thinking it was going to be there. It's there and you don't want to throw up. Blood. And get tired. Blood from the champion's nose. That would be Castillejo. Remember, it is Castillejo's title which is at stake here. De La Hoya bloodying the Spanish champion's nose here in round eight. That is all night for him. Why doesn't he use it? Oscar puts his right hand in front of his face, left hand on his hip, and you can't miss it. Casillo said that he would be a bullfighter in this fight, fighting both from outside and inside. Those red trunks of Delaware have to make him the bull and not the matador. He's got to come after De La Hoya if he wants a chance. So far, De La Hoya has been the bull, having initiated almost all of the action as we arrive in the last minute of round eight. Oscar De La Hoya has shown uh, Castillo some power that he hasn't seen before. It's enough to make him back away a little bit. He's got good reason to be a little hesitant. He can, he can drop Oscar if he only concentrates. Oscar puts the right hand over his chin this time. But you got to make him fan that thing. Good left hand body shot by Deloy. Castillejo backing away, backing away, backing away. Castillejo is thinking, hey, is thinking, hey, this guy's going to run out of power sooner or later. And it doesn't happen round after round. It just does not happen. So those who accuse Castillo of coming to this country to sell his title are partially right so far. He'll have to do something else to have a chance to win the fight. We will be playing out slow. Be real, Austin. Come on. Come here. Come here. Okay, in every punch, in every punch, you got to put some force in it. You got to put your heart in it. <laughs> Don't blow your nose. At the throw, come inside. You need to throw that left, especially to the body. With so, you got to throw something real strong. I think the lawyer is fighting a beautiful, well-rounded fight using both hands in different ways. We wonder if he hasn't sacrificed in doing that some of the lightning that he used to carry in his left hand. I can tell you this, if you move to your left constantly, Oscar becomes a sucker for a right hand. He drops it, put his left hand on his hip. Castillo is not, has not taken advantage of it at all. Nope, Castillo in the last round fired the straight right hand once and landed it, just as you said he would, George. There he misses with one. And De La Hoya rips him with a left hook. All Market Castillo tackle. has to do is be aggressive. Throw those punches with some authority. Comfy box numbers in round eight found De La Hoya landing 41 of 64, 64%. In other words, it's deteriorating into target practice for De La Hoya. 
puts his left. When you back Oscar up, he puts his left hand by his waist. Trinidad does that, and he waits and chop you on top of it. And Oya with a big left hook upstairs. Astier Ho strong enough to take it, but backing away, fighting to survive, allowing De La Hoya to rake him over and over and over. And Castillejo changing nothing so far in an attempt to try to win the fight. Uh, and that look of resignation you see late in a fight when a fighter starts to believe he can't believe he's going to win anymore is on his face. Yes, when you're alert and you have your everything about you and you just sit there, you've given it up. Now he begins to throw punches. Oscar takes a breather and he gets on him. Oscar's mouth opens for the first time. And the footwork of Oscar, now that's what I'd like to see. He does that, you can't beat him. Not even Trinidad? No one can beat him when Oscar has Not it. Not even Mosley? Try to shut me up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to be sure, George. Good body shots by De La Hoya. Castillejo just too slow to take advantage of those openings that Oscar leaves for him. Well, he's just not accustomed to fighting like that. Like a lion and tiger. One fights the other way, and the other fights another kind of way. Has the right hand. One to top. As opposed to the combinations with Big, which Delaware has landed throughout the fight. Give me some ice. I need some ice. Hey, Pierre, baby. Huh? Hi. Yeah, but I'm just saying, man. Anytime you just fire here, man, you, you, you got to take care of your business, okay? Oscar coming on in this round. Looking like he might be able to close the show before the final bell. Nick Draculich sending okay. Castillejo to Time a in. neutral corner. Fuck. And now he's ready to go. sudden arrival of a judge from Spain, it's hard to imagine that Castillejo has won a round. Oscar De La Hoya has landed so many more punches and thrown so many more punches throughout most of the fight. So let's see if the Spanish titleist wants to save his championship with a desperation rally. Hand almost to his hip, the waist again. That was about the best 20 seconds of the fight for Castille Castillejo. Yes, it was. Castillejo suddenly coming alive. Castillejo. Oscar's using that fan mill, using his right hand like a fan, and that's what's happening. You cannot move that hand once you set it in that crossover. You got to keep it there. I think one thing we've learned from the last minute or so of action is that Castillejo can land, but he still doesn't have the power to hurt De La Hoya in those exchanges. Oscar's gonna learn at that weight class, things slow down, it slows down a lot. He's come all the way up from a lightweight. 
Great right hand for Del Oya. Ripped Castillejo back. Castillejo seeming to tire a little bit after his offensive output earlier in the round. Del Oya looking to land one or two big shots. Yeah, the punches sound better at 154, George. But the things are slow. Someone is going to take Oscar into the gym and make him correct that, that crossover if you're going to use it. It's a great defense, but you better use it properly. Body shots and a left hook upstairs by De La Hoya. Crowd chanting Oscar, Oscar, Oscar. They'd love to see a late round knockout. Javier, if you're gonna throw, you gotta throw them seriously with force. You can't just stand there. You still, you still have a lot. He's not. He's tired. When you get him held up in the corner, let the punches go, man. Let a barrage of them go. They'll stop the fight. Believe me. Keep him in the corner, the run up in the head, back up top. Just keep letting him go, okay? Stop it. You're going to look helpless. Back him down. Keep throwing him, okay? Floyd Mayweather Jr. Senior has sensed properly that the crowd is a little bit uh, unnerved that Oscar, uh, although he's been dominant, hasn't been able to put any serious hurt on his opponent. And he wants him to be able to close the show out. I think that's good advice. Come in, come in like what is that? Gangbusters? He <laughs> believe like that. The crowd has been a little bit restive. They know that Delaware is winning the fight, but this is not the Delaware they're used to seeing. And you heard Mayweather telling Oscar, if you get him into a situation where you can unload throw a flurry of punches and keep throwing until the referee stops the fight. I haven't seen referee Vic Draculich in a big fight. Don't know what his predilections might be in that situation, but the crowd is going to want the stoppage if De La Hoya can produce the flurry. Just keep in mind in that regard that Castillo is the champion. So you have to give him some benefit of the doubt if you get into that situation. Good left hook by Castillo. See how Oscar cannot determine what he want to do with that right hand?
in 35 professional fights. Oscar De La Hoya has a knockout in every round but the 12th. Maybe that will be the news. It's your last round. You should be feeling good as anybody, man. It doesn't make issue, man. Walton, final round. Make it a good one. Come on. Uh, it's the last round. You know I'll what have you have to do. Walton, final round. Make it a good one. Good. Okay, you got to go for it. You got to gamble. You got to gamble. The last round, you can get hit a, little, a couple times on that set. Don't get hit. Don't get hit. Do you understand? Come on, Javier. We got to go for it. Do it for your children. This round, Mayweather is telling Delaloya, okay, you've got to fight one. Just win it. Don't get hit. We'll see if Delaloya has a mind of his own where that's concerned because he wants to look as good as he can. George Foreman, through much of his brilliant career, one of Oscar De La great qualities was his passion, his desire, his overwhelming urge to be great, look great, do great things. Do you still see it? Ah, the fire is gone. I did not see in it when he went to his corner. He just sat there. Doesn't want to hear anything. Look, I'm just here. For the first time, that's what I saw. The passion does not seem to surface hey, in the way that it wants to. That was a fire that would go back to the corner with his hands in the air screaming. It's gone. The punch is there. The footwork is there. Maybe it's just disappointment that he hasn't been able to put the finishing touch on the fight and that it would go 12 rounds, and, and that's not what he envisioned. Yeah, he's fighting a champion of the world, and people are not champion for nothing. Nothing else he can take a good shot, this Castillo. Down the road, if De La Hoya continues on the career path he wants, there will be bigger punches, quicker fighters, more explosive opponents than Javier Castillo. What will Oscar bring to that? He has shown skill and will. But he's in all probability going to leave here with a unanimous decision that may or may not be as satisfying as he wanted it to be. Sometimes those extra pounds carrying them around and training like that would make a different man out of you also. He's in the big guy world now. Biggest, strongest opponent he's ever fought. Technically brilliant performance, releasing punches correctly, landing them well offensively. Defensively, there have been some holes in Deloya's game. He's got to finish strong now. He's got the power. Oh, whoa! Big left hook, Castillejo. That's the fire we want to see. There you go. That's, that's, that's the, the fire. fire. Bring it out. It's fire, but it's not fire power. punches in the 12th round 
63%. All in all, down the stretch, it was target practice for De La Hoya as he landed constantly and consistently with jabs and power shots. I think if we'd had another moment, one more minute, Oscar could have finished him off. They only fight for 36, right, George? That's all. 12 times three, that's it. All right, let's take a look at the knockdown as De La Hoya finally put Castillejo down in the closing seconds of the fight. It was about like his trainer said, one after another shot is going to do it. Right, left, right, and down went Castillejo. Just keep throwing and something is going to happen. But before that happened, De La Hoya himself got clocked by a big left hook from Castillejo. Oh. That's what brought the fire back, as George Foreman pointed out. And De La Hoya responded with fury. Here we'll follow it all the way through to the finish, and you'll get to see the knockdown again in real speed. Oscar is just surviving as he would just get a decision and finally get a wake up call. This man is trying to get you. Harold Letterman, did you uh, did you ever find a round in the fight to get to Castillejo? No, Jim. 120, 107, 12 rounds to nothing. Oscar De La Hoya. You know, Jim. In this fight, you can hardly recall an instance where Vic Draculich uh, had, to, had to break these guys up physically. I mean, there were no clinches in the fight, and that could be a very integral part of it. Had Javier Castillejo tied him up, roughed him up a little, he might have done a little better. But as it turned out, Oscar De La Hoya completely dominated. Tell me about the extended left hand. Is that legal? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You, you, can, you can measure a guy as long as you keep the boxing glove closed. If you open a glove, it's illegal. Thank you. Let's go up to Michael Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, we go to the judges' scorecards. After 12 rounds, all three judges same, 119 to 282 more punches than did Castillejo. He was throwing 85 more punches than did Castillejo. He was landing at a violently destructive connect rate of 54%. And that's statistically brilliant stuff by CompuBox standards. Jabs, De La Hoya landing 156 more than did Castillejo. Castillejo throwing more than De La Hoya, 7% is an abysmal connect rate for the jab. 56% is almost unheard of. Larry Merchant stands by with the winner, Oscar De La Hoya. Uh, thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Oscar, for winning another championship. Um, tell us, give us your take on this fight. Was there anything in Castillejo that was unexpected by you? Um, no, not at all. Not at all. I just think that uh, I felt inside the ring as if he was a little too slow for me to react fast enough. You know what I'm saying? Um, when you have a slow fighter in the ring with you, I mean, he's a strong guy. He's uh, all the credit in the world. But when you have a guy who's fast and has to make you think and aware up in the ring, then that makes you a better fighter inside the ring. With Castillejo, he was a, a, a fighter who hit hard, but 
was slow. He didn't make me really think too much. And that there kind of brings you down sometimes to his level. But my speed, my defense, um, everything was good. I'm very pleased with everything. You seemed a little frustrated going into the late rounds that you had been unable to put on an Oscar-like show in there, even though you were dominating the fight. Were you frustrated? Uh, not, not frustration, but I knew there was something that wasn't there. I mean, there was something that wasn't complete. And um, we just have to uh, go back and train and, uh, and fight the bigger and better opponents. Is it fair to say that this was one of your more well-rounded opponents in terms of using both your hands and using them in different ways? Definitely, definitely, because uh, we showed that we have uh, the body shot, the, the, the jab to the body, the right hands over his jab, blocking his jab, coming back with my jab, feigning with my jab, left hook, so blocking, rolling the punches. Um, but still, we have to work on a lot of things. I mean, Mayweather still has a lot on his, on his arsenal, so um, we're just going back to the drawing board and come back with better stuff. In becoming a well-rounded or a better-rounded fighter, are you sacrificing in any way that lightning left hand that won you so many fights? No, it was very difficult to land a, a left hook because I, I guess he was a, a fighter who, uh, who was expecting it all the time. Um, so it was, I had to use something different. For instance, my jab to the head, uh, to the head and to the body, doubling up on the jab and using more right hands. So, that was going to be the key. So, so you feel that when you fight the guys you want to fight now, they have to think about more than your left hand. Oh, they have to think about a complete fighter now. This is, Gotti was the first step, Kassi was second step. Now it's like three strikes and you're out. That's the fastballs coming right at them. All right, let's take a look at the knockdown at the end. How satisfying was you that finally, after 11 rounds, <laughs> two minutes and 50 seconds, right. you finally and got him? The right hand that wobbled him, that 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 started the job, and uh, with the left took right back, right on his uh, cheekbone or or the chin. Um, I felt that I, I was going to drop him because it was solid. There it is again. So this, does that put a kind of, uh, of an exclamation point on what was a dominant performance for you? Um, of course, always. It's always going to be that way. I mean, I'm always going to ask myself questions. We're always going to go back to the drawing board and work on better stuff. We're always going to work harder, improve more things. And that's what Mayweather brings to the table, that he's going to show me more. And I'm, I'm, I'm learning and I'm, I'm excited to come back and, and, and rule the boxing world. Speaking of which, Let's talk about futures now. Trinidad is going to be fighting for the middleweight championship in September, and if he wins, he says he's going to fight Roy Jones next. Are you going to try to, or your people going to try to dissuade him from fighting Jones so that you can get him before he fights Jones by offering him a whole lot of money? Well, like I said before, uh, once I, I, I held the, once I hold this world title that I have now, it's like. I'm in a driver's seat, and now if they want to fight me, they're going to fight me for whatever money I'm going to offer them, which is going to be more than what they're making, of course. It's only fair, but on my terms. You don't, think, you don't think that you're going to be able to dictate to somebody like Trinidad when you're fighting for his title, do you? Oh, I will. I will definitely, because he will not make more money than he will make uh, uh, with a Jones. He'll make more money with me than he'll make with Jones. All right, let's assume he goes through with his promise to fight Jones. That leaves Vargas and Mosley as the big fights you want. Vargas has stated that he's going for a version of this junior middleweight championship in September, and he won't be available to you probably until early next year. That leaves Mosley. Are you going to insist on a big fight against Mosley in the fall, or are you going to go to a Russian who is a mandatory challenger? If it's Mosley, if it's a, a Russian, if it's Vargas, if it's Trinidad, I'm right here. I've been, I've been asking for, they've been asking for this fight, for instance, like a Vargas. Well, now you have it. Let's do it, you know. Um, with Mosley, of course, I, I have to get the rematch. I mean, that's only, that's a must for me. It's, it's, it's all about just uh, getting revenge. So um, whatever fighter wants to fight me, but in my terms, come on, let's be fair. Let's do it. Everyone talks about quantity the quantity of belts you have. But what you're talking about is the quality of the top fighters, that that's what you really need. Well, I want to capture the best of both worlds. 
not, not anybody can capture six world titles in five different weight classes. Not anybody fights the very best. And you know, Larry, that I've been fighting the best all, all my life. And so um, I got to prove it once again. I, I, I want to keep on fighting the best to try to be the best. You say that with a certain passion. Is the passion and the fire back to the point, even though you've made an, an astonishing amount of money in your career, you've tried another career, is this the only thing left for you now? Well, the last thing I'm going to say, uh, Larry, is that I feel like a forest fire. So let's get it on. You won't put it out. Thank you very much, Oscar. Jim? All right, uh, George Foreman, he, he said to us yesterday, did Oscar in the fighter meeting, that absolutely, incontrovertibly, he wants to have one of the three big fights, Vargas, Mosley, Trinidad, in his next fight before the end of the year. Having seen what you saw tonight, might it not be a good idea to have another fight at 154 pounds before he goes? No there? doubt about it. He's going to get in at water. He's in deep water now. He's going to have to learn how to tread a little bit before he step up and start bothering with those guys. He's good. He's got the power, but he hasn't got his defense in order yet. There are a lot of things missing there, but he still has that power, though. That's the I one think thing you ought to train him. And if you were going to train him, what is the one biggest priority that he should work on prior to the three big fights. Look, this guy's got excellent footwork. He's a good looking guy. He's got power. Use it. Don't play around dropping your hands and doing all of that stuff. That's for the ugly guys. Just go fight. Let's go back up to Larry Merchant. Thank you again, Jim. We're here with Javier Castillo. Javier, tell us what you were in with tonight and why it was such a difficult fight for you. Cuéntanos de eh, eh, con quién tú estabas peleando esta noche y dinos por qué fue una pelea bien difícil para ti. Bueno, yo estaba esperando, yo sabía que era muy rápido, pero aquí se, me he dado cuenta que era todavía más rápido. Entonces yo, yo tenía que esperar a su velocidad para meter algún golpe en algún hueco que, que dejara libre para contragolpearle. Sí. I know he was fast, but tonight I found out he's quicker than, than fast. And uh, the reason was that the, I had to wait till he attacked so I can counter punch. He's a real quick fighter. Is he as strong as anybody you have fought in, as a junior middleweight? Does he bring his punch up, or is he just an average puncher at this weight? ¿Crees tú que él es tan fuerte como un peso junior mediano y que su golpe es demoledor como los de junior mediano como los tuyos o cómo es el, el golpe de él? Bueno, más que pega fuerte lo que lo que hace es eh, pegar en serie muy rápido, entonces precisa el golpe. Yeah. He, he's a quick combination puncher. He punches in series and combinations, and that's what makes the, the punches harder. All right, we want to look at the end of the fight, and the question is, did you really go down at that point from fatigue or from the punches? Vamos a mirar la última de la pelea, la caída, y dino, ¿te caíste por los golpes o porque estabas agotado, cansado? No, me conecto. ¿Vale? Ajá. He said, he, said he, he, got, he got hit, and that's, that's why he went down. You told us before the fight that you would be defined by this fight. Do you feel that you gave everything you had and that you can live with that? Tú no dijiste antes de la pelea que esa es la pelea que te iba a hacer. Entonces, ahora que perdiste, dino, puedes vivir con lo que pasó, mostrarte lo que eres. La prueba está, ¿no? Que la gente está, está muy contenta conmigo. Yeah. The, the proof is, is here. The people saw a great fight. I gave it all on and uh, I show my courage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Muy amable. JB, up to you. All right, Larry, thank you very much. And let me go over some of the same territory with our Hall of Fame manager and trainer as well. What did you see tonight? I saw speed being a big, big factor tonight. I think that Casajeo had more problems with Oscar Speed than his punching power. And at a certain point, I think both guys felt that neither one could really hurt them that much with punching. Uh, I think that Oscar still should get back on his toes. When he fights moving forward in his hunch position, he's not as effective as he is when he's on his toes. Why wasn't the power there, Manny? 
I think he's drawing his punches back before they fall. He doesn't follow through the way he should. He's just letting them contact. It's still power, but not as much as he could have. But I think he'll improve in the next couple of fights. One other question going over, again, the same territory that uh, Larry Merchant went over and Jim Lampley. If you were Trinidad, Mosley, or Vargas, what would you be thinking after witnessing this performance tonight? I think after seeing this fight tonight, I think both of those guys are all going to be pretty excited about fighting Oscar because Oscar's got to get back to his toes. And if he fights that way, he's, he's you know, he's still not as devastating and as dangerous when he's plodding forward as he is when he's on his toes. Does that suggest to you that maybe the passion is not there with Oscar? George Foreman said he saw Oscar just sitting there on the stool. There was no fire. Did you see the passion? Well, the passion is there when he speaks. And I, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I, I've got to watch a little bit more. This fight here was, he won the fight, but still there's a lot of question marks I have because Castaheo, he was controlling with his speed and Castaheo just couldn't handle the speed. But uh, other than that, you know, it was still a close fight. All right. In terms of desire. Understand loud and clear, Emmanuel Stewart. All right, folks, a programming reminder regarding events on TVKO pay-per-view next month on Saturday, July 28th. The lightning fast Roy Jones Jr. will be back in action against Julio Gonzalez. It's a long road to the championship, especially when the guy on top is Roy Jones Jr. But undefeated Julio Gonzalez 